wars, conflict, crime, violence, nuclear threats and personal threats, it sometimes seems like these are the only things which surround us. Welcome instead to Pieces Podcast, where we give a platform to inspiring solutions. We are raising the voices of those who are researching, teaching, singing, and working for peace. Join Pieces Podcast, brought to you by the International Peace Research Association, IPRA, in cooperation with the Peace and Justice Studies Association. Pieces Podcast, sharing effective lessons and today's voices speaking out for peace. We are excited because in uh, April of 2023, the Latin American Council on Peace Research, uh, the main regional association of International Peace Research Association in Central and South America and so-called Latin America, held its biannual conference. And as it has for many, many years, it held before that conference a very important youth camp and Youth Congress. So for us, all of us, I think, in IPRA, looking at the next generation and looking at some of the visions, hopes, dreams, challenges, problems on an individual level, on an institutional level, on a country level, and just in general, their own visions and thoughts is what we want to hear. So there's no wrong answers. There's only uh, there's only sort of being uh, too uh, too shy to, to, to not go forward to struggle to make the most intense and effective social changes we can. Um, essentially, though we are in Chile, we've had a huge number of activists at the conference and at the youth camp from Colombia and from Honduras. So we have five young people with us from those two countries. Let's start by having them just introduce themselves by name and by where they're from, more or less, in terms of country, city, institution, whatever they want to say. And then we'll start the conversation. Welcome, my comrades, my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you much for having us. I think uh, that for us, the youth, the next generation to take those big steps in looking forward the peace around the world, uh, we are thrilled to be with you because you are a guy with lots of experience and we are really grateful to be here. I think uh, we all had a really good time at the Congress. And yeah, <laughs> okay, I forgot to say my name. My name is Noe. <laughs> I'm from Honduras, from the National Autonomous University of Honduras. And it's Institute for Peace Research called Youth Bus. It's specifically from a program called Jóvenes Universitarios Voluntarios por la Paz in Spanish. And yes, we are essentially looking for for deconstruction and find new logics to to achieve that peace that we know it is almost impossible, but the importance is the path we are going through. So I have my partner here. I'm Jerry. I'm from Honduras. I want to change or share my energy or my the happiness, the happiness, because in Na <coughs> in Honduras, I'm join of the program of volunteer of peace, and I change my life because I love the peace. I love the change. I want to share to other uh, youngers or people yep. this experience because. The peace, it's difficult, it's a way too difficult, but the process is important because if you share with people, with my partners here, it's possible. It's possible to share this patience, this love, this energy. I will do my best try, all right, <laughs> to, to, to speak in English, but if I can't, no I have my, my translator. <laughs> translator, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, my name is Santiago. I'm from Colombia. I'm from, from Bogota. Um, I'm a study. I'm, I'm a historian from a university of Externado of Colombia. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be there, to be here. I'm happy 
to be researching and and uh, collaborating with with you and with other people mm. and other generations to make the questions that we have to do in this in this world and this country and this continent uh, about the peace and the new society we want to build. Yeah, no? mm -hmm. of course. Uh, we, we say in, in, in our in our work like the future. Uh, it's it's not a thing like in the other decades. It's not a thing that it's be for himself. It's a thing that we need to build, to make, to to achieve. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Um, and it's, it's 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 difficult because we don't have what to do. We don't have how to do it. But um, I'm happy to be in the process to 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 researching you know, to to try to found the the, the way to do it. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Lydia and I'm from Honduras and 23 years old. And I'm just like really really excited to be here today. Um, I think that I speak from all of us that we just want to share this feeling, this energy of changing the world. And we were talking before that we have heard and read about a lot of researchers, investigators, etc., etc., about peace and what does it mean and what should we do with that. But for, talking from all of us, we are all of us. We are from Latin American countries, and we want to actually make a change and to transmit this message of doing something that we are part of the solutions as well of the problems because you know we're part of the society but we're here to talk about it i don't want to take a lot of time but we're going to get with a lot of topics before so yeah that's it for now i graduate myself from la universidad external de colombia last year i work with women around the world i am a psychologist with a gender gender, gender, gender topics, topics. Yeah. i I work with artistic practices, and I believe non-violence is the way to work through the world. Uh, I'm not going to take much time, because we're going to, like Celia said, get into... get into all the topics, but I'm so glad to be here. I'm glad to be with these amazing people, and I'm glad that my family, my ancestors, make the way for me to be here in this podcast talking with you. And thank you for the life and whatever you think sure. about for You know, getting us together and getting to know Matt and all of these things we're, that we're in now. So, yeah, we just appreciate it. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss about it. So, let's go. Let's get okay. into it. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. I guess I'll say first to make note that it's not a coincidence that in that middle range from some of us um, are a little bit older in the IPRA global space. Um, there are these extraordinary uh, individuals, and I'll name them Esteban Ramos and yeah. Diana Marcela Agudela Ortiz yeah. from Honduras and Colombia, respectively, that are uh, and have been the, the mentors, the teachers, and much more than that, the friends, the mm -hmm. supporters, the comrades. Yeah. It's really what some of us in the U.S. have been talking about as breaking hierarchies, as saying, It's, you know, this teaches our students and the students are teachers, and we have to work together mm -hmm. across generations. Not just to pass the batons, oh, here we have our lessons, now please take the ball and run with it. No, to say we have to work together, we have to carry the batons together. We have not successfully made social change movements effective and powerful enough to bring a lasting peace with justice. And of course, without justice, there is no peace. We understand that. Oh. So therefore, um, it's really, uh, and it's noteworthy, Esteban just finished uh, his role, his term as Secretary General of CAIP. And uh, Marcella just got elected, uh, yeah. literally both of them yeah. today, yeah. Uh, to be uh, one of the new secretary generals of Kaif. So it's it's very exciting uh, to have you, their students, yeah. but also their friends, okay. but yeah. also sure. their their colleagues, you know, yeah. etc. We become colleagues yeah. <laughs> in the struggle at a certain point. So with that said, I guess I want to um, I want to start with the country specific. Maybe we go from the country to the individual, and then back to the region and the world. So I think it's worth hearing a little bit. Uh, you know, Yarali said uh, there are some difficulties, eh? and that's clearly true. 
Uh, and we know that the whole world is not at a place of peace. There are very, very few places anywhere on the planet, any region of Ipra or any region of the earth, where we can say, ah, there it is, that's the way to do it. There are no models. But some of the difficulties in Latin America and some of the possibilities are, I think, uh, useful to note here. So maybe take a little time first. Let's hear from Colombia. Mm -hmm. And then let's hear from Honduras yeah. about some of the deep challenges and also some of the exciting possibilities in your country. We'll get to the personal and then the whole region and world later. But let's start with the country specific. So Colombia, take it away. Telling ourselves that we are a country in conflict. Mm -hmm. And we are people that have conflicts every day and there's no other way to do things. So in our subjective view of ourselves and others, we only see Colombia as a difficult country. Mm -hmm. I think the first barrier that we face is that we think there's no other way to do things. And there's no much uh, discomfort in ourselves that we can reunite ourselves and do something different. Today, Santiago was telling us that it's kind of unbelieving that we all have this discomfort in ourselves and there's the same things happening. We go to protests and we see different practices around the discomfort and we have a lot of people saying this is not what we want, but then this is all that we have. Mm. Because there's no way that we can get through. But I think we can get through there's no way to organize that. Mm. Because we believe there's no other way to believe that Colombia is a better place mm. to live. Mm. Mm. So we just said, yeah, we have the right that is really bad, but we also have corruption, we have robbery, we have dishonesty, we have in ourselves anger, sadness, we have discomfort, we hate each other. And mm. there's no mm. way for us to build a new Colombia mm. if we're not mm. able to think a new mm. Colombia for ours. But also if we're not able to be to build a new a new life mm. in our individual perspective. So I think mm. that's the first way. And the other one, I'm going to take a little bit. We are using the same mechanisms as they used to. Mm -hmm. We're killing people, we're making pay the first response to others, and we're not thinking maybe love is the answer, mm -hmm. maybe art is the answer, mm -hmm. maybe dance Yo. is the answer, yeah. happiness, youth, mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. We're just saying if we're having this problem, we have to attack it from hate, from anger, from sadness. And those are valid emotions because we don't talk about valid or invalid, just comfort or discomfort. But we're talking like there's only this way and there's no other way we can make up, we can make it to us to be different. So I think the other thing that's happening to us is we're not thinking of new ways to rewrite the story we're, we're going through. We're going through, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, let me say this. We do here on the one hand, Okay, Colombia has like the highest rates of murder of human rights defenders mm -hmm. and peace workers in the world, in the world, in the last six months, more than in the Ukraine. Mm. On the other hand, you have this election where, oh, surprise, you have this amazing, or you have this vice president in the States, we're like, oh, uh, an, an Afro-Colombian woman vice president, and you have this progressive president. So, and then of course you have this history of armed struggle, but then you have also this history of people laying down their arms. So, talk about those complexities. What is it that's so confusing about Colombia today to the world and to you? I think it's difficult to change the long term structures. Okay, les voy a contar una historia de Mr. Mendes. He's going to tell the story. Durante el estallido social tuvimos una situación muy interesante y es que. Eh, en alguna ocasión, por, de manera completamente espontánea, estábamos haciendo una marcha que no, digamos que no planeamos de antemano, de, de traduciendo. During a important uh, historic moment in Colombia, they were going through like a... Una marcha, estábamos haciendo una marcha. Protest. Yeah, protest. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, era una marcha espontánea, no, la, no, no había sido planeada. It wasn't planned. Y se hizo a un lado de la calle 
justo al otro lado de la calle se hizo una contramarcha. Yeah, so it was in a part of the street and actually right in one side of the street there was another part of police. And was a protest against the first protest. Mm -hmm. no? And absolutely everything was spontaneous. Um, so that's an evidence that our society is it's um, divided it's not divided. Yeah, it's divided. It's divided um, because some, no, like a lot of, of people in the Colombian, um, still thinking in the thing in the things that the older generations thinks. Mm -hmm. They are, they still conserve the um, the mental structures that they have in the in the past. No, in the in the streets we 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 are looking for a like like a like a revolution in absolutely every everything every um, uh, sense it, it's a problem of generation and uh, if the generations are uh, sharing the world and the city and the country there will be a conflict i would like to say something about your question in order like according to santiago The, the big thing that happens in Colombia is that, yes, we have Petro as a president, Francia Marquez as this powerful black woman that is leading us to a change. But they're not specifically the change. Yeah, we elected them. Yeah, they have new ideas. But there's not enough power in the world mm. to change a society just in four years. Mm. Mm. They maybe mm. have all the ideas, all the power, all the emotion, but it's also a responsibility for, for us, the Colombian people, to change the mm. world that we want to have. And today they are in the small holding... Life. In the small life. Yeah. We need to do it in the small life, in the, in the quotidian mm. life. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. We're going to shift to Honduras for a minute and begin making the connections between uh, Honduras and Colombia. I just want to say you're listening to Ipra Peace Podcast, and I want to say in particular with these five young people from Latin America, please recognize that they're all speaking their second language. So we may lapse into a little bit of Spanish, but by speaking English here for this English language podcast, they're all speaking not in their native languages, yeah. <laughs> and that's pretty impressive in and of itself. So be okay. So be gentle with us. So be gentle with us. Be ge even with me, be gentle with us. It's our first time. It's our first time. Oh, okay. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> that's a really good acclamation. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. <laughs> But I would like to continue with what you were saying about Colombia, because Alejandro and I were talking with someone else. It is one. He's not here because a lot of reasons. But we were talking about something that people want like instant change. And that is not possible. You know, this is a process. We need to change the way that we think. And that is not something that happens from a day to another. Okay. So I can relate this thing I'm saying with the Honduras uh, situation because we recently changed um, this by a uh, power power that we're letting our country and we elected another movement but we don't see that change and i think that we have to give them we have to give them some time because as santiago said things don't happen in four years only this can take decades and it's not like to be um discouraged but We need to know that this is a process that as we disconstruct ourselves as, as individuals, we have to know that as a society, it will be harder because we are, we need to build stronger relationships between each other. So there's no way we can change a whole country from a day to another. We have to give us some time. We have to work in ourselves before trying to work with others to build a better society for all. You know, though this is an international podcast and we'll have listeners from all over the world because it's co-produced by the Peace and Justice Studies Association, which is IPRA's North American affiliate, so there'll be a number of U.S. and Canadian listeners. And I think what was just said here and what we're going to hear more of in a moment is a great and important lesson for people in the U.S. who are looking for those individuals 
to be elected to make some quick change, yeah. that is never possible. It's always involving a letdown, a disappointment, something that's not going to lead to change, or maybe lead to change for five minutes or five years or even 15, and then those changes will be reversed. So a super important lesson. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, I want to share my experience in this program because the balance is present in this actually past in... ¿Cómo puedo decir? No mucho. Not much. Not much. But it's a hope because... Hope. Hope. Yep. It's a hope. If everything, think about the personal, social, structural in nature is sense to fight the violence, it's possible. It's possible. It's not one answer about the uh, peace. It's many people. It's many experience. And I would like to share my experience in Spanish. Celia, I want to help my... Of course, yeah. Cuando yo entré en el programa en 2018, yo era una persona totalmente diferente. When I started in the program of Voluntarios por la Paz in 2018, I was totally different. Y me cambió la vida. And it changed my life. Porque comprendí que habían tantas violencias Because I understood that it was a lot of violence que yo that hacía I, that I made y recibía and received. Y yo dije, necesito cambiar. And I said, I want to change. ¿Qué puedo hacer? What can I do? Entonces decidí seguir trabajando. So I decided to continue working on it. Y aquí estoy. And I'm here. En Chile. In Chile. Hablando sobre la paz. Talking about peace. Convenciendo y persuadiendo a otros. Convincing and persuading <laughs> others. Y contagiando de mi energía. And giving others my energy. Y alegría a los demás. And happiness to others. Porque la alegría es una revolución. Because happiness, happiness is a revolution. Es el momento de cambiar. It's the moment of change. Y yo lives. los invito a que and, sigamos en esto. And I'm inviting you to continue doing this. Solamente. Just that. <laughs> But, you know, when, when, when Yareli talks about uh, inspiring, I think it's worth noting that at the opening of this Congress, uh, Esteban Ramos, in, in his major speech, uh, in front of, you know, a, a, a large crowd of university types and the rector of the University for Peace and the deans of the universities here in Chile and the presidential commissioner mm -hmm. on peace and understanding here in Chile, that in, in the middle of Esteban's speech, as was planned by all of them, there was a sudden, lights go out. Yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden, from in the middle of the crowd, people would get up, and there'd be a little glow from a, a cell phone on their faces where they would give different interventions about parts of the world and struggle to deepen, to inspire, but also to challenge and deepen the way we conceptualize what peace research and peace studies are. And of course, Yareli was the first of those shining lights, which is, I believe, what your name means uh, in, terms of, in terms of making an intervention for all of CLAIP and all of peace studies. So inspiring indeed, mic drop. <laughs> it's hard to follow Yareli because she's amazing, <laughs> totally amazing. And I just want to mention something real quick, and it was that... Esteban, as Matt mentioned, he's our teacher, he's a friend, and he was telling me something important before I came here, and it was like the path of making peace and inspiring others is not easy. And at some point, I was feeling stressed and all of this. I was just like, I don't know what to do. And he was telling me it's not about like the results that you you're gonna get after a process or something being done but it is about the whole process the steps you, that we are making so in case that you're wondering why don't i have the results that i i want is this about what you're doing it's not the result because we're young people sometimes people take us down or they don't take into consideration our, our thoughts or anything but that's why we're here to open new spaces to helping others and to believe that actually what we're doing matters. No matter of our age, no matter of our titles or anything, we are peacemakers. We are the ones that are going to make a new world and we have to believe in that. And it was an honor to represent or to make the performance that Matt was talking about. And that is something that absolutely makes us believe in this and the 
it is about the past. We learned something in in these last days. And it is a phrase, it is um, a name in a, a Colombian language, I don't know, and it is Ubuntu. And Ubuntu means mm -hmm. I am because you are. And that's something that beautiful because it means that we are all connected, no matter if, if we are from Latin American, North American, Europe, Asia, Africa, we're all of us, we want the same thing and it is to make a change. It doesn't matter if it was just like a tiny little bit of peace, but it actually matters. And that's why we heard maybe this podcast doesn't give us enough time to talk about it. But we hope Mad One is back <laughs> and everyone. So yeah, we just want to share about it and to tell you that it is possible to make a new world or at least in the spaces that we are to make a change, even if it's on one person or not even the whole person, but a thought that a person has. The day, that day in the performance, our teacher, Marcela, that also was my mentor, and I'm really grateful for her and Esteban, said something that really stuck to me because of hard times. We are the power, we are the yeah. force, we are the love of the people that came before us. We, in that day, in that performance, we were the sadness, the anger, the force, of those people we were representing. And we, we and we were carrying them. As a woman, I was carrying those mothers in my belly. belly. And I feel the force of them in my ovaries. And I was like, I'm capable of creating life, but I'm also capable of defending it. Mm. And I think oh. that's the oh. most powerful thing. And yeah. I, from then and like now, I like, I'm like, I'm capable of everything because I can create life. Mm. We can create life, but also we can create possibilities. Mm -hmm. That's the reason we are here in Chile talking. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason we connect with all these different young people and we love them and we hug them really intense because we are creating new ways of engaging with others. We are creating new ways of loving other people, connecting, creating knowledge and I think that's the most powerful thing of this experience. I just wanted to mention something real quick because Matt was asking us about Honduran, you know, and uh, we talk about other things because they are connected. But I just wanted to mention that in my experience, and I think that I talk, um, and I'm including Noe in, and Darrell in this, and this is it that sometimes we normalize some things in the seven was telling us that for him, Uh, people from Chile and other countries, they're more like spontaneous or open with certain topics. And that is part of what this Congress in concrete is giving us and is letting us. And is it there we were like encapsulized or centralized in some beliefs. And this actually shows us on make us realize and open our eyes because no, I was telling the first day, like, I'm impressed because I haven't seen this in a hundred years. And I was like, that's totally a lie and things like that. And now I'm like, you know what, guys, you were right. It was actually true. So being part of this and comparing and sharing these experiences, as making us open our eyes more because in Honduras there are a lot of things that we have normalized. And it's not that it's bad, but it's not totally okay. It's not normal. It shouldn't be. And that is part of one of the projects that we have that maybe we can talk about next time because we're taking a lot of time. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm just letting you with this information in case you want to ask us later. <laughs> Look, it's just worth, it's worth saying a few quick things here, you know national to the personal to the regional international and you're already doing it yeah like you, you, you've completely done it already so <laughs> so you know talking about uh, some of these personal political connections and also frankly talking about Ubuntu, which mm -hmm. is of course a, a, a phrase that was popularized in south africa mm. uh, by the Kosa and zulu peoples especially what by uh, archbishop desmond tutu uh, who was a friend of ipras and so the fact of 
of these connections becomes clear. And as we go on in this conversation, and the other thing I guess I wanted to say is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, and hopefully most people who follow IPRA do already know this, but for anyone who doesn't, the the Latin American uh, Regional Association of IPRA, CLAI, uh, has really uh, worked since the very beginning of the COVID pandemic to proclaim the idea that we can never go back to life as normal mm, yeah. and that we have to create a new normalcy. And so that idea, which became a campaign, which mm. helped grow throughout Latin America and the world, and which also helped get Kaib to grow, mm. was in this, uh, this last week institutionalized in some ways in the publication of an extraordinary new book, which those of you who are IPRA members will will hear about and find out about because it's going to mm-hmm. make a splash. But I guess I'm going to frame this next series of, of conversations, and I know uh, several of you want to say some things, and it's okay, we're going to go. Um, this whole personal, political, individual, etc., in a lot of the world, especially in a lot of the global north, these things become divisive or have become divisive, especially in terms of identity politics. Now, you've spoken about identity, you've spoken about gender, You've spoken about individual choices. Um, we, we haven't spoken about, but in the context of the camp, there were some Afro-Colombian youth. They were not just of African descent, but they were some of the youngest, youngest people in the camp. And then we also haven't spoken about LGBTQ issues. But these are issues that are with us, that are with you, that are, not, that are present, huh? but have not seemed to be divisive. And I think, again, for those of us in the global north for whom these issues have become touch-button divide issues, it's useful in this next round of comments that you make to talk a little bit about how you've created unity Mm. out of diversity and not just been divisive about it. Yeah, well, I think that it is harder for Latin American countries because we have like a really strong (laughs) cultural... uh, I don't know. I think that we, we cannot like leave all those thoughts that our ancestors gave. And in Latin America, like all of grandfathers, fathers, or I don't know, they, they always told us like that is not normal for a person who like, who enjoys the company of someone of his same gender. And now it is a challenge for us to just deconstruct all those thoughts because we, we grow with them. And yeah. it is really hard because it, 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 is, it is like it, it, it is a conflict with you, with, your, the, with that normality you set. And that's why we try to build something else. In, during the COVID, we were thinking like, we want to go out again. We want to go to mo- the theater. We want to go to the parks to walk. But then we thought, do we really want to go out and live the same thing that we were living before? No, we need to build another thing. We need to to give all those people who doesn't have a voice a voice to tell them to to tell us what they want, to take them in in our thoughts, to tell to take them in our policies. I don't know. We need to build something else. And that is why I think that This is really important, like for us to be here because we are building that connections that around all Latin America and we hope to get to the world, of course. Um, we want to build that. We are, we are motivated. We are (laughs) emotional because we are here. We are excited. I think we have, we have met some people that we just saw it through a video camera. We just saw it through a cell phone. And now we are here. And now we are feeling each other. And that is really important to build those new realities we want to build. So, I don't know. I, I, we don't want the same for us. We want all those new generations to live in a better world for everyone. Not for just the ones who has the capabilities to get what they want. But for everyone. So, I think I'm thinking up. Eh, mi nombre es Juan Manuel Acevedo de Colombia. My name is Juan Manuel and I'm from Colombia. Yo solamente quiero decir... I que, just wanted to say... Que es por eso que el proceso no está institucionalizado. That's why the, pro, the process. process is not in, institutionalized. 
sino que es un proceso desde abajo. But it's a process from the down, the bottom. Y es porque las instituciones nunca se, pesa, se pensaron esto. Y es porque nunca las instituciones que se beneficiaban de esta vieja malidad se pensaron que esto podía ser un problema. And it's because the institutions that like lead these spaces never thought about that this would happen. Y es por eso que no está institucionalizado por un estado, por una universidad, sino por el pueblo. And that is why it's not institutionalized by state, by government, or by institution. By the common people. Just, just by the by, common people. Just by the common people. Porque es justamente nosotros quienes vivíamos las consecuencias adversas de esta vieja normalidad. And that's the reason why we were actually living the consequences of this normal way of living. Y los que pensamos entonces que era necesario, en términos políticos y en términos ideológicos, construir una normalidad. And, that, and that's why the ones that were thinking about this is not normal in political, political and other ways, that this should be different. Era desde abajo donde reclamábamos tener voz. And it's from the bottom that we claim to have a voice. Y una voz desde el español. And a voice from the Spanish. Desde los negros. From the black Af people. African American yeah. people. Or black community. Because we want to rule. Yeah. Desde los indígenas. From the indigenous aboriginal people. Desde las mujeres. Desde from women. women. Desde los pobres. From poor people. Desde los universitarios. From university students. Los trabajadores. Work. Workers. Y desde todas las personas que nunca han tenido voz en la historia and de from, nuestro continente. And from all those people who never had a voice in our country. Y por eso una nueva normalidad no está institucional, es institucionalizada. And that's why a new normalcy is not institutionalized. Es un movimiento empírico, empático, que yes. busca también la raíz de los problemas y busca su solución desde la diversidad. It's an empathic and empiric way of knowledge and that's why we are looking for the ways to come through this kind of paths and change those paths we're in. Y combaten imperialismo. We're combating and imperialism. And it fights the imperialism. Y se piensa otras formas en las que el capitalismo pueda funcionar. And we're thinking about other ways where capitalism can work and function. But maybe we don't want capitalism yeah. to work and function. Yeah. Pero siempre es del respeto a la vida. But always from the respect of life. La vida en plural. Life in plural. In this Congress, I can learn about uh, many people and the stories. And I want to keep in my heart all the stories because I think the force, the passion, the love can give my energy to keep in this way for peace. In this um, Congress, I learn about to uh, different countries and different peoples, but the same things, the same passion. Mm -hmm. It's peace and these jungles in the many people. We can't, we can, we can. Yes, we yeah. can. We yeah. can keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I can give my happiness and energy to share my words, my phrases. And I want to many people of what well, everything, whatever part of the with world, every word of the world. When they hear me, the patient of the peace, keep in your heart. Yeah. I just want to say something really little but very important. I'm part of the LGBTQ plus community and we're not talking about us that much. I went to Claib and I don't see even a little tiny bit tiny bit of us. And we're here. We're present. We want rights. Mm -hmm. But we're not getting those rights in the same way. We're not even on the conversation. Because, yeah, you talk about us, but that's because you know you have to talk about us. But in our daily basis, we're like, 
invisible people because yeah maybe people say we have to normalize us mm -hmm. but we are not being normalized by everyone mm -hmm. we're just being like put it under the carpet like yeah we have lgbtq plus community but let's put it under the rug because we don't want to talk about us and i think peace need to talk about those things that are under the rug because we have to remove it and we have to talk about us our experiences me as a psychologist that is also a lesbian i have to think maybe a lot of our hearts have this kind of suffering that comes from a way of thinking that likes to ignore us mm. and that has this kind of resentment because We don't want the same lives as everyone mm. wants. Mm. And because we don't want the same things as everyone else. Mm. So I think a lot of our suffers comes from places, not just LGBTQ plus community, come from, our pl come from different places that we don't talk about enough. Mm. So I think it's a great exercise from, from us, for the people that is listen to us, the ones that are editing this podcast, to think about the from the root that our hurts come from. Mm. So we have to go deeper than we think, farther than we yeah. can do it. So we know where those hurts came from. And when we found them, we will know how to solve them. But we have to solve them with others. So we have mm. to talk more about the root of our problems mm. and the root from our suffering. Yeah. I just want to mention something real quick, and it's about an experience that we recently had when we were coming here. As we mentioned before, Noe, Jareli, and I from Honduras. And it was interesting that we were coming on a taxi from the airport to the our hotel, mm -hmm. hostel. And I, we were, I was joking with the guy that was driving with the driver, and he was telling that, no, people here in Chile are crazy. They're lesbians, they're gays. And I was like, I am a man. I believe it's myself, I have a man. Obviously, I'm not, but uh, he was like, what did she just said? <laughs> and, I, and obviously, he was joking, and I told him. But it's interesting that not only in our country, Honduras, but also in here in Chile, these kind of comments are happening. And as Alejandro said, this is not mentioned. We were in, in this kind of space, and, and that is why I really appreciate this qu question came coming from mad because we absolutely need to talk about it because we should not normalize these stereotypes that just hurts our society and the way of people is the younger people is growing and thinking about society and all these stigmas that are happening so we're here to make a change and maybe it's not gonna happen in two months five years 10 years, but we're here to fight it. Maybe when we're older, maybe when we're 60, we, we're going to make a change. But that is what, that's why we're here, to make this and to give you guys some hope and love and strength from what we're getting from each other right now. Voy a pedir traducción otra vez. Okay. <laughs> eh, creo que lo más importante es ver que entendemos que el proceso, no, el, el proceso y los resultados del proceso no los vamos a ver. I think that the, more, the no. most important thing is that we are not going to see all those results that we want. Porque la paz no es dar un abrazo o no es poner un cartel o la paz no es escribir un libro. Yes, because peace is not to post to post something to to hug someone. Es ir desde nosotros, desde las transformaciones de nosotros al resto del mundo. It is going from us from our own construction transforming ourselves yeah to to transform the world es pensar cambios estructurales y profundos it is thinking about a structural change and deep changes desde la empatía from empathy el altruismo altruism la so la solidaridad solidarity y el amor <laughs> and love pero siendo conscientes que quizás no lo veamos <laughs> but being conscious that we might not see it y que quizás Lleguemos a morir sin verlos. And maybe we could die without it. Pero lo importante es ver. But the important thing is to see. Ver, just, to see. The important thing to see is que de pronto en 200 o 300 años nos recuerden por esa semilla que sembramos. That maybe in 200 or 300 years they're going to remember us for that seed that we planted. I totally agree. I mean, As we, as we said before, changes will not happen from a day to another. We have to be patient. 
we have to build we have to still going through this path without seeing anything change but if we change that matters that is that is what we are looking for we are looking for or to change for us to change to then we can build a community we can build something a network to grow with people and that is what will lead to will let us to the change in the world you know i think uh we're at the stage now where what you represent are communities of resistance and struggle and it's not one youth or two colombia honduras it's many and it's many that are powerful because of the ways in which you're connecting mm -hmm. to each other and to others so on that note the international peace research association wants to thank you for all that you're teaching us these older <clears throat> professors who have a lot to learn from all of you so good night or good morning whenever you're listening to this podcast thank you mom thank for inviting you, us thank we you. appreciate it thank you very much thank you for tuning in we will drop an episode every third monday of the month so follow us to stay informed see you next time